All right, guys, welcome back into the Lantern Church. This is part two of uh, my message entitled, Don't Let Satan's Men uh, Beguile You. We left off in verse number three. Uh, where it says, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, talking about uh, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And there are, uh, there are lots of uh, treasures uh, in the Word of God that, uh, that we are to dig in there and, and, and to search out. There's lots of uh, little nuggets in the Bible that... Uh, uh, we're to dig in there and, and, and search out like we're, we're searching and digging for gold. There are treasures in this book. Uh, go with me to a couple places in the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs uh, chapter number 8. Proverbs chapter number 8. Proverbs 8 verse number 11 says this. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Nothing compares to wisdom and the Lord's wisdom. Amen. And in Christ, there are treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All right, we're to dig in there and take it all in. Amen. Into our inner man. Um, says in, in another in another place uh, um, says in uh, Proverbs 4 uh, verse 7 it says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding go to Proverbs 16 16 now in Proverbs 16 16. It says, how much be better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? So wisdom and understanding, it's greater than gold and, and, and silver. It's, uh, it's better than rubies, right? There's a lot of treasures to be had in our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. And listen, and the and you know we're we're taking these things into our into our inner man, amen. We're taking all the 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 you know the, the these these treasures of wisdom and knowledge, you know this this learning and and growing that we're doing in the Lord. We're taking all these things into our inner man, and Satan, what does he want to do? He wants to come along and he wants to he wants to rob you. He wants to spoil you. He wants to take those. <laughs> Uh, those treasures out of your mind, amen. Right, the battle is the battle is for the mind, right? And there are so many things that you know just just take us away and corrupt our minds, right? Like the television, amen. Like our cell phones, <laughs> TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. You get to scrolling, and those things just those things eat at you, right? They take our minds off of the treasures uh, uh, of wisdom and knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We ought to fill our minds and hearts with, with those things as, as much and, and as often as we possibly can. Right? There's, there's so many things that can, that can take our minds off of, off of the spiritual things. Amen. And we want to be spiritually minded, amen? Right? To be spiritually minded is life and, and peace. Go back to the Colossians with me. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words to beguile. You know what that word means, right? It goes all the way back to the garden, right? Eve was was beguiled. That word beguile, it means it means unthinking, 
right? Someone who is beguiled, someone who's deceived, someone who's tricked is not someone who is thinking, right? They're not mulling over things, right? right? They're not someone who is thinking about the things of the Lord, right? They're not thinking about Scripture. Maybe it's because they don't know the Scriptures, right? They're, un, they're unthinking, right? To beguile is to deceive. It's to, it's to charm. Um, it's to enchant. Uh, it's to bewitch. Remember, Paul used that word um, bewitch in the book of Galatians. Uh, Galatians chapter number three. Remember the Judaizers, they were getting the Galatians uh, uh, back, back under the law, right? It says here in Galatians 3, 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law? No. Or by the hearing of faith? All right. First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1 1 Timothy 4.1 It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, the faith being the doctrine for today, right? What, what, what's to be believed today? Our doctrine is Romans through Philemon, and it, it lies in Paul's epistles. That's the doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. Amen. That's, that's what your preacher and pastor ought to emphasize and, and ought to teach. Now, now we ought to teach the, the whole Bible. Right, but there there ought to be an emphasis on our doctrine for today, right? Because that's that's our life, right? That's what's going to help us function as members of the body of Christ and function uh, in the dispensation of grace, right? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. That's another meaning of that word beguile, seduce giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That means your conscience is it's numb, right? It's not even, it's not, you can't even, you can't even think right, right? Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Can you uh, think about what, uh, what denomination that uh, won't allow their, um, their clergy to marry and forbid certain meats on certain days. Can you think of a certain denomination that does that? I can. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving uh, of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Right? There's, there's nothing un, unclean to eat. You can eat whatever, whatever you like, all right? Now, there might be some things that you might not want to eat, but uh, uh, but you, you can eat whatever you like as long as it's received with thanksgiving, all right? It's sanctified by the word of God and prayer, all right? So that word beguile means to, to, to bewitch, to, to seduce, to entertain. You know, Satan is the author of amusement. He loves to entertain the saints, right? He loves to entertain people in church. And that's where a lot of churches have become. They, they, they became entertainment amusement parks uh, for Christians, just for, for you to be entertained and, and get in your feelings, right? It's, a, it's not about the Word of God anymore and, and, and digging into the Word together. And, and it's not about uh, speaking the truth with one, one to another and sharing things uh, in the Word of God and building one another up in, in, in God's Word and, be, and, becoming, and becoming tightly knit together and compacted, right, by every joint that, that, that su supplieth, right? You know, and, and that uh, that all has to do with, you know, the word working, 
uh, effectually in us, and then us taking that word and, and sharing it with others and building one another up. To church is not it, it's not that to, uh, what the Bible uh, uh, you know says it should be. Right, that's what church ought to be about: uh, us coming together over this book and growing together in this book and building one another up in this book. That's what it's all about. Right, but what is church? You know, most churches became about it's became about entertainment, feelings, gospel singings, and I like I like gospel singings, and I like gospel songs, and I like hymns. I like all that stuff, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is this book, right? And we can get a, we can get emotional about the things of the Lord. You know, there are things in this book that'll that'll bring you to tears. Right, just just thinking and, and and mulling over and meditating upon all the things that the Lord has done for us. That yeah, you're going to get emotional about the about the things of God, Amen. But what do a lot of preachers like to do? They they like to make it they they make it all about emotions and and feelings and and so much so that sometimes they don't even preach the word. Well, but God showed up. No, God didn't show up because you didn't preach His word. Right, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Right is what is, is what the scriptures tells us. Amen. All right. It says in the Second Timothy uh, four two. It says, "Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Whether people are receiving it or rejecting it, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering." And doctrine for the time will come. And that time is now. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, because, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. This is Satan's game, folks. Right? Satan has ministers, and that might surprise a lot of. Christians out there, a lot of Christians that they're so naive to think that oh oh no, Satan's not in the pulpit. Satan doesn't he isn't using my preacher or pastor. He might very well be using your preacher or pastor, and you're just too ignorant and naive to uh, to, to to know it, right? You think because your pastor you know gives you a little gives you a little a uh, uh, little bit of the word of God doesn't mean he's preaching it right. <laughs> Doesn't it doesn't mean he's preaching it according to the revelation of the mystery? Doesn't mean he's rightly dividing the word of truth, and that's not dividing truth from error. That's you're rightly dividing the word of truth. It's it's truth from truth, right? Truth to you, what's to you and for you, and, and what's to Israel? You 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 have an understanding of of, of things in, in the Bible. You understand, all right? To, you understand your plan and program for the church, the body of Christ, and you understand the difference between Israel and, and, and the body. You understand the difference between heaven and earth, right? You understand the difference between law and grace, right? You understand uh, Jesus' earthly ministry from his heavenly ministry. You understand right, the Old Testament and, and the New Testament. You understand the difference between law and grace. There are things to uh, differentiate in the Bible. You understand the Twelve's ministry, the Twelve uh, Apostles, and you understand Paul's distinct message and ministry. There, are, there are, It's a skill set that, that, uh, that God requires uh, of his stewards, and not, ever, not everybody has that, that skill set, right? Whether it's because they're ignorant, uh, whether it's because they haven't spent enough time in, in the book, or maybe they do know it, they just don't want to let you know about it. Amen. Right, but the time is now where they're not enduring sound doctrine. All right? And you see these churches, they just they just bring in preacher after preacher after preacher that goes along with their denomination. They're just bringing them in. And 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 the and and, and the church today, they're just they're just eating it all up. Right? They just want to hear what they want to hear. Right? They want to hear stories. Oh, I, you know, I I used to think you know, I used to think uh, when I first started preaching that oh, I just don't, I just don't have any good stories to tell or anything like that. 
and I and and that really uh, that really upset me. Oh, I'm not like these other preachers. They got all these neat stories and uh, to add into their uh, messages. But you know, God God showed me that you know what you got the greatest story there ever was. You got my book. That's all you need. All you need is a King James Bible. There's plenty of uh, uh, stories in there. There's plenty, uh, and not only stories, but what we really need is, is sound doctrine today. Because the the, the church it, and these uh, a lot of these denominational churches they're lacking sound doctrine, right? Christians don't know how to live the Christian life. They don't know their true identity in Christ and how to live from that. Right, because they're not being preached, they're not being taught sound doctrine. And a lot of it is because, well, <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they're after their own lusts. <laughs> right? They just want to hear what sounds good. What they want, they want their ears tickled. Amen. Go back to Colossians. Go back to Colossians with me. Says in this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, words that lure you in, they they appeal to you, they captivate your mind. Did you know Satan wants to take you captive? Did you know that <laughs> he wants to take you captive? Amen. He wants to take your mind. That's why we need to have our loins girt about with truth. We need to tighten our minds with truth. But Satan. He wants to take you captive. Did you know that? It says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 26. Well, let, let's begin here. It says, uh, in tw let's begin in 24. It says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. And you need a lot of patience with a lot of people nowadays because... A lot of people they just they they just don't get it, and it's and it's hard. It's hard to minister to others, right? It's hard when when somebody's not getting something that you get, and you want them to get it, but the but they're not coming to it an understanding of it themselves. It's hard, all right? It's just like you know, it's it's difficult when you're sitting down with your kids and and getting them to do their homework, right? You're trying to teach them and tell them how how to do it, and then you can kind of tell on their end they're really not getting it or understanding, but it's easy in your mind. It's easy to understand for you, right? It takes patience, right? It takes patience to deal with your kids. It takes it takes patience to deal with those who are kids in Christ, who are, uh, as far as their maturity is concerned, that, you know, they're, they're not very well, uh, they're not very well, far, far along in this thing. They're not very mature, Right, and some have just have, they've been brainwashed by the devil. They've been brainwashed by religion all their lives. So, it, 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 so you got to be got to be patient as a servant of the Lord. Right, don't argue with people, but be patient with them. Right? And you got to be you have, you have to have an ability to teach others. Right, and not everybody has not everybody has that ability. Right, but 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 a bishop he has to be able to teach others. Right. Um, it says here in uh, verse 25 in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth they have to acknowledge the truth right? they have to change their mind from the air that they're in and they have to acknowledge the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Right? So those that are opposed and contrary to the sound doctrine, they're 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 ensnared by the devil. They've been taken captive by the devil. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. That's the devil's will. The devil's will is to take you captive. Right? But God's will is 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 to is to make you free, amen. It uh, that brings me to an, to another verse. It says in Second uh, Corinthians, verse number ten: For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, those fortified positions in our mind, 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's the job uh, of a faithful minister. Amen. And it's a hard job. It's, it, it's, it's not an easy one. All right. It says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, alluring words, words that lure you in, right? And uh, Satan's ministers ha ha have a way of, of speaking and talking, talking to you. Go to Romans chapter 16. Now, we were just there a little while ago in the, in our first, in the first part of this message. But it says in Romans 16, Verse number 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. So all the things that, you know, Paul had, had taught previously in Romans, right? And Romans is a foundational book for, for, the, for, the, for the Christian today, right? We, you know, I, I, there, there really is a, a curriculum here in, in Paul's epistles and um, just... Just get it. Just get in Paul's epistles and, and start reading them from from Romans on on to Philemon, and um, that's that's sound doctrine for the church, right? And anybody who's preaching and teaching contrary to that, and anybody who's preaching and teaching against Paul and neglects Paul, they're contrary to the doctrine. Okay, all right, because Paul was sent by God. Right, just like God sent Moses, right? God sent Paul to the Gentiles, right? He's at, he is our apostle today. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Listen, I'm not going to sit in a church where the pastor isn't emphasizing the right things and teaching sound doctrine. I'm not going to do that. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Right? So they have language that's artfully adapted to captivate the hearer. All right? And Satan, he wants to take you captive. All right? They seduce you, right? And they, and listen, they target, they target the simple-minded. They they target those who are without understanding. They target those Satan targets those who lack wisdom. They're naive. They're ignorant. Right? That they, they they just they just believe every word that that's spoken to them. Well, the pastor he he mentioned the Lord and he 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 you know he uh, quoted some scripture and he he read a couple verses here there, but all the while he might be taking it out of context. Right? He might not have the the proper understanding. Right? Whether that's willfully on his his end, or or whether he's doing it on purpose. Right? Right. Good words and fair speeches, language artfully adap adapted to captivate the hearers. You know, some of these preacher boys coming up, they, they know how they know how to preach, right? They know how to talk to you, right? And not just the not just the young men, but the older the older men too. They they know how to talk to you. They, they know how to preach a, They know how to preach a good sermon. Amen. They know how to leave you out that church in your feelings and all emotional, right? But it ain't going to do nothing for you later in the day and as you get, go through the week. It ain't going to help you none, right? Good words and, and fair speeches. They know how to uh, have you leave in the church saying, oh, that was some good, that was a good message. All right? And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, alluring words, right? And say, and he targets the he targets the the simple minded. Um, 
2 Peter, they target the unstable. Paul uses that word establish. All right? And establish is to, is to set something up. It's that foundational stuff. But, but establish is to, right, it's, it's, it's to stabilize that, that, that which has already been set up. All right? Uh, Second Peter two Second Peter two fourteen. Peter's talking about uh, these natural brute beasts. He's talking about those in, in, in the tribulation. And they're going to be false teachers during that time. Um, it says, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. It says here, come down to verse 18, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live and air. So they beguile unstable souls. And Paul talks a lot about being being established, right? It says here in uh in uh, verse seven, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. That's you know, that's how we're going to not be moved away. And that's how we're not going to be tossed to and fro, right? Right? It's being being rooted and built up in Christ and, and established in the faith, established in the sound doctrine, right? We're spending time, we're spending time in this book. Amen. That is what Paul is getting at. Right, we're getting we're getting rooted and built up in in the Lord Jesus Christ when we're when we're studying in this book and we're taking this book in, Amen. Remember Mary and Martha and Martha was running around and she was cumbered about much serving, but Mary she was right where you and I need to be, right at the feet of Jesus, just soaking it all in, taking it all in, Amen. Right, but. You know, Satan, he's he's after those unstable souls, right? He's after he's after those that, that are unthinking, that are not that are not established in the faith, right? And that's that's how he gets you. Right? If you're not in this book, he's gonna get you. Amen. And he's gonna hold you captive. All right, until someone's to, to until someone's loving enough to tell you the truth, Amen. But you know what? I've been telling a lot of people the truth over the past couple of years, and uh, most people look at me uh, as an enemy. Uh, you know, the churches that I previously came out of, they look at me as a as an enemy. I was, oh, he's just sowing discord among among brethren. No, no, that's not true. I, I'd I'd love nothing better than to go back to. Uh, some of the churches that that previously attended, if they would receive the truth, right, and they'd start getting in this book like they're supposed to, yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Do I make you my enemy because I tell you the truth? And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Oh, we think about that word beguile, and we go back all the way to the garden, right, in Genesis and. Eve, we know that she dialogued with a serpent to 
who questioned God's word, right? And Eve added to God's word, right? She saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. And, and we know that she gave her her husband with her and he did eat. And, and we remember that they hid from God and they tried to cover up their nakedness. And, and uh, Eve's answer to God was that, she said, that the serpent beguiled her. Right, and you know that the man they blame the woman, so they they play the blame game, right? Uh, we might remember in Genesis chapter number twenty nine. Remember, uh, Jacob served Laban seven years for Rachel, his youngest daughter. Uh, but when his week was fulfilled, when those seven years were were fulfilled, and Jacob went in unto his wife, it was Leah, right? And when he woke up in the morning, late, late, uh, when he woke up in the morning, he, he saw that it was Leah. And what did he say? He said, Laban beguiled him, right? <laughs> uh, we might remember in uh, Genesis chapter 27, we remember uh, Rebecca, Jacob's mother, uh, cooked up a scheme for her son Jacob to get his father's blessing over Esau's. And Jacob would go on to trick his father Isaac into thinking he was Esau. And we remember Rebecca disguised Jacob by putting Esau's garments on him. Uh, she took the skins of goats and put it on his hands and, and the smooth of his neck because Esau, we remember Esau was a hairy man and Jacob was a smooth man, right? And, and, uh, and, and, and Jacob went along with his mother's scheme, right? And he received his, his father's blessing, which was, which was God's will, right? But they, uh, they, you know, I would say they, they went about that the, right, the wrong way, right? It was deceitful. It was, it was, <laughs> they used trickery, right? But, uh, that's, that's, that's what it means to beguile, right? To, to beguile is, is, is to trick, right? It's to trick. Uh, that word beguile means to, um, Um, as as many different definitions, right? It means to practice deceit. Um, it means to 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 be fraudulent. Um, sorcery, witchcraft are tied in with that word. Um, you know, power. Um, uh, uh, witchcraft is 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 power, magic. Uh, dealing with devil and, and, and evil, de dealing with devils and evil spirits, right? A, a, you know, uh, witchcraft. You know, able to uh, to to perform supernatural things, right? Do, you might remember the magicians and and Exodus, but uh, yeah, sorcery and witchcraft are, are tied in with that. Uh, reminds me of a verse in um, in Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter number four, Ephesians chapter number four, uh, in Ephesians four, uh, let's begin here in verse 11. It says, um, remember Jesus, he he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And it says in verse 11, he gave some apostles and some prophets and, and some evangelists and some pastors and, and teachers uh, for, the perfecting, uh, 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 for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Trickery, uh, slight, trickery, uh, slight of hand, clever, sly, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. All right, that's Satan's ministers. They lie in wait uh, to deceive, All right? Slight, they're sly, they're, they're, they use trickery, All right?
They're looking to beguile you. Lest, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. All right. It says that, that, that in Christ is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You know, Christ is the source. Uh, he's the source of, of nourishment, right? And Christ is all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You know, Satan wants, wants you to go outside of the source. All right, you think about that word outsource, right? Uh, you, you might think about that in terms of, uh, like, um, I know a few years uh, back, um, I'm a custodian at a, school, at, at a school. They were talking about outsourcing the custodians, bringing in another company. I know that uh, they did that in, in the kitchen. They brought in another another company. It's no longer under the our school system, it's under a, a another company. They they outsourced, right? Well, Satan wants you to, to go outside the source of nourishment, right? Uh, he wants you to go outside <laughs> uh, of, of Jesus Christ, right? He wants you to look towards uh, uh, the philosophy and the world's wisdom, right? He wants you to go outside of Christ, amen? And that's how he tricks. That's how uh, that's that's how that's how he gets you and, and captivates your mind. And this I say, listen, any man should beguile you with enticing words, right? Paul didn't use enticing words. Remember First Corinthians uh, chapter number two. What did Paul say? Uh, he said. Uh, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not. With excellency of speech or of wisdom, he didn't use fair words. Uh, he didn't use, uh, uh, what was it, fair words? Uh, and uh, my, mind, my mind's going. Let me go back to He didn't use good words and fair speeches, did he? No, he preached the, the wisdom of God, Right? That's foolishness to the world. He preached the uh, he, he preached the the um, or what would the world would call the fo foolishness and and weakness. But what what does God say? He says he says the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. All right. God uses the the foolish things and the weak things to confound the uh, to confound the mighty, right? But Paul said, and I and I, brethren, when I came to you, came now with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit uh, and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Paul didn't use an enticing words, did he? Amen. He, pe he preached Christ and Him crucified. He preached God's wisdom. Amen. And that's what we ought to preach. Uh, verse number five, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit. Join in beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So he was he was beholding their firmness and their fortified place, but he was still, even though he was joined in beholding their order and steadfastness, steadfastness he, he, he still took time to make sure, to, to warn them. Right, and and you know, even though you you might be going along good, you better take heed to the warnings because anybody, any one of us can be can get caught up in a, in a fault, right? In some kind of doctrinal error, any one of us can uh, can be enticed or alert. We still have this flesh, right? And Satan hasn't stopped working on us just because. But uh, we're in we're in this book. He's working on you twice as hard as he have therefore received Christ. And how do we receive Christ by faith? 
by trusting in what Christ did for us, how he shed his blood on a cross, is buried, risen again the third day. He was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. We receive Christ by trusting in what he did. Amen. As ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. All right? He wants you to walk in this newness of life. Not every Christian is walking in newness of life, amen, because they're not in the book, right? They're not taking in their doctrine. They don't, they don't understand how to walk, amen? They're practicing religion. They're going back under the law because, well, they don't know how to walk. They think that's just what they, 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 they're supposed to do. Rooted and built up in him, right? Rooted deep, deep in the ground, right? Rooted and built up in him. Rooted. That's downward, downward growing. That's the downward uh, growing, right? Your roots run deep, right? And then built up. You think about bodybuilding, edification. Rooted and built up in him and established. In the faith, as he had been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And then Paul, he gives the warning here in verse 8. He says, beware, beware, lest any man spoil you. Right? Satan's looking to, to rob you from knowing all your spiritual blessings in Christ, who you are in Christ. He wants to rob you through philosophy. And philosophy, what's that? That's the, that's the love of wisdom. Right? And the world loves wisdom. Right? The world has a wisdom, right? Humanism, right? You flip on the news. They they have a wisdom, and they think that they think they're they're pretty they're pretty wise. They're pretty smart, right? They think that they're evolving and that they're growing. They're not they're not growing to nothing, right? God's going to destroy the wisdom of of this world, right? Isn't that what he says in in First Corinthians chapter? Uh, uh, chapter number one. All right, what does God say about it? First Corinthians chapter uh, number one. It says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. All right. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and Vain deceit after the tradition of men. What's a tradition? It's something that's been passed down from generation to generation, right? It's like you have traditions in your family, traditions in your home, right? A lot of these denominational churches are just filled with traditions of men, right? And they take those things over the Word of God, right? Wasn't it the Pharisees? They were the washing of hands and pots and things like that, right? But what they they transgress the the commandment, right? Wasn't it? I believe it had to do with uh, what uh, helping out their mother and their father, right? And that all they would have to say, "Oh, that's dedicated to the to the temple," and I can't I can't help you, Ma. I can't can't help you, Paul. They transgress the 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 commandment. They overstepped that, didn't they? Tradition, traditions. Right? Washing hands, washing pots. Amen. After the rudiments of the world, right? A rudiment is an, is an ordinance. They're basic, uh, fundamental elements, first principles. Right? Details. Right? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain to see after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Satan wants you wants you in religion. He wants you practicing religion, right? It says here in uh, verse uh, uh, number 19. Well, actually, verse, let's begin at verse number 18. It says, Let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. There are churches that do that. Right? They get you worshiping angels. Oh, you're Oh, you're not good enough to approach Christ. Well, none of us are good enough to, to approach Christ, but, but Christ, because he shed his blood for us and 
put a spirit in us, uh, you know, when we, we and justified us, we, we now have access to God, amen, through His Son, Jesus Christ, and we can approach God now, amen, because of what Christ has done for us, right? But there's churches that they don't want you to know that. Oh, so you guys, you gotta, you gotta worship angels instead. Let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Any man who tells you that he's seen angels and seen spiritual things, he's lying to you. He's vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. The Bible says, and not holding the head, right? It says in uh, uh, Colossians one. That uh, Christ, uh, he's, the, he's the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He's to be in first place, right? We're to set him up first place. He's the head of the body. Amen. I'm guessing the church here at Colossae wasn't, wasn't doing that. And not holding the head from which all... The body by joints and bands having nourishment. We're to, we're to worship the head, right? The head of the body, Jesus Christ, amen? We're not to worship angels. And right? not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment. Christ is our source of nourishment, amen? Who's, he, he, he's, uh, and Christ has hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, right? That's how we're going to be nourished and built up and get rooted and built up. It's it's through Jesus Christ, establishing the faith, right? From, uh, from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, we're dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, Right? Israel had a religion. They had certain things that they, they had to do um, pertaining to the law, right? They had to pray towards the temple, and there were sacrifices and, and, and offerings and uh, just a whole bunch of different things. Israel has, had a religion, and, and they failed miserably, right? And all those things were, were to be a sh uh, all those things were, were, were a shadow and they were they were pictures of the true they were pictures of of Christ right and they're pictures of things in, in in the future as concerning the the holy days and the new moons and the Sabbath days and and meat and drink and all those things and uh, Paul talks about that here in verse 16 right and Paul said don't let anybody judge you concerning those things. You know, meat and drink don't commend us to the Lord here. Um, but uh, listen, we're, 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 we're dead to these things, right? If we, wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, we're crucified uh, with Christ, right? Why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. This is what Satan wants to take you captive by. He wants he wants you in religion and practicing these things, and try and trying to attain to godliness through through religion. It doesn't work like that, right? Godliness is not attained through religion. It's attained through through this book and this word working in your heart to Christ working in you and through you. Right? It's not through touch not taste not handle not that, that, that that's not how it's done if you're in that kind of stuff my friend you've been beguiled which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility oh it looks good right just like the pharisees they make long prayers and Right, and they, they, they would do a lot of things that looked good appearance wise, right? But their heart wasn't right with God. Amen. And that's a lot of people today. It's a lot of Christians today. Right? They do a lot of things that look good. Oh, I go to church three times a week. Oh, I didn't miss one I haven't missed a service in years. Oh, I uh I, I give all my tithes. I pay all my tithes. I pay tithes on my tithes, right? <laughs> right? I, I, I knew a preacher. He, he tithed his, uh, um, tithed the eggs that he got from his chickens. He said, oh, I, I, he 
I, I tithe my eggs and give them to other preachers. You know, it just, just nonsense stuff, you know, just foolish stuff, right? Not understanding God's word and God's will uh, uh, for him today. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. You can't defeat the flesh with the flesh. There was a man some 2,000 years ago, right? That took our sin upon him. It says in Romans 8, 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak to the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The spirit's in this book. This is our life, folks. If you don't want to be beguiled, you need to get in this book. Amen. All right. And walk after your doctrine. Amen. Your doctrine, Paul's epistles, is going to teach you how to walk, how to work, amen, in this dispensation of grace. It's going to keep you from error. It's going to keep you from being beguiled uh, by Satan's ministers. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life in peace. Amen. Are you spiritually minded? Are you after the things of God? Amen. Or the things of your flesh? Amen. That's what Satan appeals to. He appeals to the flesh. He's looking to entice you. He's looking to beguile you and trick you. Amen. Don't let Satan's men beguile you. Satan has ministers. Did you know that? Amen. You better look out for him. For them, you better watch out for them. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for the time we spend in your word uh, today, Lord. And I just pray that the message will go out and will help help uh, uh, many people uh, to, to get away from those who are trying to trick them and deceive them and, and that they would get rooted and grounded in your Son, your Lord Jesus Christ, that they'd get in this book and take heed to it and take it seriously and get, get in their doctrine. So they learn who they are in Christ and how to walk in the Lord and this dis in this dispensation of grace. Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. If there's anyone that has never trusted you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that they would do that today, Lord. And that they would trust your finished work, how you shed your blood on the cross, was buried, risen again the third day, and that they would trust what you've done, your son has done for them. Uh, and we just thank you and praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.